Hello everyone, my name is Alfred Cromwell and I am the founder of City Tutoring. We are an academy that offers both online and in, if you're in the Lynchburg area uh, in person, but mostly online classes. Um, and we are a remnant of what colleges and universities used to be up until the end of the 19th century where rigor was prized. So the video today is going to be about one of us. A lot of you have asked me about the pre -cal For some reason, I've been getting a lot of emails about our pre-calculus course, which is really should be called trigonometry. That's what it used to be called uh, back in the old days. But I know that more people broadly understand it as pre-calculus or modern, uh, uh, you know, introductory analysis. You know, we're living in an age where rigor has fled the classroom. And the word standards is muttered at best with embarrassment these days, rather than a sense of dignity. And so we at City Tutoring, we stand on bending. We do not pander to the whims of intellectual sloth, nor do we dilute the, the noble discipline of mathematics with, the, uh, with, with trendy buzzwords like accessibility um, and, and all of that. Uh, here, a student has to prove their worth. Not by mere attendance, but by you have to have a command of logic, language, and precision. And so while other institutions may hand out grades as easily as they hand out lollipops, we still believe that knowledge, true knowledge, must be earned. And so in, in, a, in a time that we are living in that is increasingly allergic to logic and discipline, and where the very... Uh, anytime you mention the word standards, and especially when you mention the word logic and rigor next to each other, it sends shudders down the spines of trembling administrators. And rigor has been driven from the classroom, uh, from the classroom like an unwelcome guest at a carnival. And we have to take our stand here. We do not flinch. We do not apologize for expecting excellence. And while a lot of the great temples of, well, former great temples of learning across this land crumble into, they've become really amusement parks of distraction. Uh, their lectures are reduced to TED talk jingles. Their assessments have uh, sticker charts. And we have to remain an institution here that remembers what education once meant, which was the shaping of the mind through trial, the honing of intellect through resistance and the elevation of character through perseverance. So we, we, we cannot just ignore these problems. We have to tackle these problems. And while others can chase feelings or uh, we're, we have to pursue understanding and they can hand out grades like they do, almost like they can hand out their A's like Halloween candy, but we still, uh, we do it differently here. So to pass a course, uh, it's not merely to it's not merely surviving it. It is to master it, and mastery begins not with comfort but with confrontation. So the quiz that you're about to see is no formality. It is a it is really a first test of how well equipped you are to move forward, given the structure of our pre calculus course. And so only those who demonstrate the uh, the requisite command of logic, language, and mathematical structure shall move on. It's not cruelty. This is kindness rightly understood. True cruelty would be to flatter a student into ruin. And so to spare them difficulty now is to abandon them to confusion later. So they will be, that you are tested at city tutoring. There are certain standards that we have. And only when they pass may they proceed to the higher challenges of pre-calculus. But I mention all this because I also want to say that we don't offer tools. Uh, that we, we, don't, we don't just say something and then not offer tools for the climb. So I'm happy to say that we actually have a sponsor today for our video. And our sponsor, Brilliant.org, is not some idle diversion or digital bubble. It is a serious learning platform that is uh, designed to forge mastery through real effort and real progress. Brilliant begins with the bedrock of understanding and 
they sort of steadily guide the learners upward through, they have a, a, a series of increasingly challenging uh, in-depth problem solving toward concrete, uh, you have academic and professional goals. So this is not quick and easy clickbait disguised as learning. This is actually meaningful study that is carefully structured and intellectually demanding. I've seen uh, a lot of good stuff there. Exactly what real learners deserve, unlike so many of the other uh, platforms out there. So Brilliant.org uh, has earned a, a reputation, and you can look this up, for being substantive and rigorous, especially among independent learners, math educators, and professionals looking to deepen uh, their understanding. So I want to first take the opportunity to thank Brilliant.org for sponsoring this video. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what they do and uh, how it works. Brilliant is a learning app that is designed to be uniquely effective. You will see lessons that include what Brilliant refers to as hands-on problem solving that allows you to grapple with different concepts. According to research, this method is proven to be six times more effective than simply watching a lecture video. As you all know, I've said many times that professors who just upload PowerPoint slides are wasting your time and their time. Brilliant's first principles approach really helps you build understanding from the ground up, which is really the only way to effectively learn mathematics. And they have a perfect mix of engaging problems, competitive features, and daily encouragement that keeps you motivated and on track. Plus, all content on Brilliant is crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from Stanford, MIT, Caltech, Microsoft, Google, and more. Brilliant's newly updated math courses help you establish a strong foundation in algebra and then build on that to conquer calculus and beyond. With an emphasis on problem solving and reasoning throughout, which is incredibly useful and I highly recommend it. You can discover all the algebra you can already do but haven't realized it yet. You can also strengthen your reasoning and problem solving abilities with lessons that give the perfect level of challenge. You can develop your mathematical intuition and fluency with visuals that bring core concepts to life. You can learn efficiently with lessons that highlight the most useful, applicable math concepts. And so if you seek a good companion in your math homework assignments or just daily practice or to venture beyond and go into number theory, probability, or more importantly, logic, Brilliant may well be an excellent option for you. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, you can visit brilliant.org slash math, or you can scan the QR code on screen, or you can click on the link I left in the description. You'll also get 20% off on annual premium subscriptions. And so now we can get back to the uh, anal analyzing the quiz. All right, so have a look at the quiz first. Uh, I am going to share with you the, the solutions just because I change it every year. So it doesn't matter that students have already taken uh, this quiz. But it says answer each question as indicated. And I always require, of course, name, date, all that. All quizzes are without a calculator. The use of calculators is strictly forbidden, as is the use of any other electronic devices. And then um, we do have a handbook. Please refer to the City Tutoring Handbook for an extensive explanation of the honor policies and the definition of cheating. Cheating, we, we take cheating very, very seriously in this institution. Um, so the first question is, have a look at the questions anyway first, and then we'll, we'll go over them. I don't know if you can see it well on your screen. Um, and as I said, I used to be more than happy to share these, these things. Um, but what happened was people started emailing me and then I would email them back the, uh, you know, they, they, I would email them back with the test and then they never got back to me. So it was a waste of time. It's a huge waste of time. So if you're actually serious about, if you want a copy of this, you can email us, but there is a charge for it, uh, just because it indicates that you are actually serious. Um, but anyway, this is what the quiz looks like. There are 10 questions. This is for chapter one, by the way. If you do not pass chapter one quiz, you do not move forward in pre-calculus. So 
my guess, and I don't say this to be arrogant, but my guess would be that the average or even the, or even the above average, uh, at least public school student in America would fail this quiz because no one offers the sort of instruction, the, the sort of approach that we do at City Tutoring. Very few people that I know, even to, even in the rigor, the so-called rigorous schools. I've, I've had students from, for example, the Dalton School, the Dalton School up in New York. Uh, they, they don't have exposure to this. Their parents are paying a lot of money, by the way. And they don't have any of this. So uh, the, the, the remaining questions are, you can see them here. Number six, for example, is discuss the, valid, the validity of the following argument. Right? So we do ask about validity. We ask about negation. Um, and then eight, nine, and ten. Convert the following open sentence into a true statement. And then the last two questions I ask is just give an example of a conjunction and give an example of a disjunction. All right. So now that you've seen what it looks like, you can try it. And let me know what you feel. Let me know if, if any of this looks familiar to you, especially if you're a high school student or even a first year college student in math, even if you're a math major, let me know, or an engineering major, or, uh, computer science, let me know. Yeah, I mean, I hope that if you're a computer science major, that you at least have some exposure to this. And then I will solve the problems. We'll go over the solutions. All right. So for the first statement, uh, for the first question, given A equals 0, 3, and 5, determine which of the following are true. Well, the first one, A, 3 is an element of A, right? 3 is in the set, so that's true. Uh, B, five, the, the set 5 is not an element of A. Come on. 5 is an element of A, but not the set 5. You have to be careful with the no, no notation here. Uh, the third statement, C, 0 is an element of an empty set. Well, that's false. The set, The empty set contains no element, so zero is not in it. Zero is something. Um, for D, that's true. The set three is a subset of A because three is in A. Uh, let's see here. E, false. That is, it's a set is not a proper subset of itself. It is a subset of itself, but this symbol here without the line under it means the proper subset, which excludes equality. Now for question two. All right, we're assuming the domain of X is the set of real numbers. Convert the following sentence into a true statement by using one of the three. Well, we have three quantifiers here. So we have x squared plus 9 equals 0. Well, if we rearrange the equation, we have x squared equals negative 9 for no x. You know, you know better than that. You know there's no real number like that. And so therefore for no x, for no real numbers. Um, for number three, the statements here, you have x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals 0. Uh, the set B is X squared plus 2X equals zero. And set C is, uh, the condition is X is greater than zero. So we have to specify the following set by roster, the union of A and B uh, with the intersection of C, right? So the first equation, you can factor it out. X minus four times X plus two equals zero. That would give you the set of the solution set four negative two. Uh, for set B, the solution set would be 0, negative 2. So if you bring all the elements together, you have 0, four, uh, 4, negative 2. So the only thing that would intersect with C, given that X is greater than 0, uh, would be the 4. All right. Uh, let's see here. Number 4. Write the converse and state the, the one that is true. So the converse here, you, you would write it as if A, the union of A and an empty set equals an empty set, then A equals an empty set, right? So the converse of that would be 
if A equals an empty set, then the union of A and an empty set would equal the empty set. Now, is it necessarily true? Well, yes, because if A is empty, then the union of, of A and the empty set would be equal to the union of two empty sets, which is an empty set. So the, the converse in this case uh, would be true. Uh, for number five, yes, uh, that is the, the correct answer here would be B, right? If X equals Y, then X squared equals Y squared. Well, then if X equals Y, then X squared would not be equal to Y squared. That would be the negation statement. Um, number six is a valid argument, and I don't have room to put it on here, but you would have to use, uh, my students would have to use logic symbols. You would have to use all the, the, the grammar of logic to do this. And uh, some people have questioned, they say, why are you doing logic in a pre-calculus course? Well, why, I mean, why on earth wouldn't you? How could you have a mathematics course without logic? That That's one of the most irritating things for me is to, to pretend to teach math when there's no logical foundation, especially, especially in a pre-calculus course. Um, number seven. Now this varies the vocabulary. The, the, the vocabulary that I use in our class is the one that uh, would be would have been used in Dolciani, right? So Dolciani used to use uh, in her books uh, the the well detachment, right? We're looking for six principles. You'd have detachment, contraposition, disjunction, equivalence, uh, substitution and a syllogism. So those are the ones that I was looking for. If you were in my class, you would know, uh, you would use those specifically, but your mileage may vary there as long as you understand that they're, that, um, how to prove a theorem and what the conditions that are necessary. Um, number eight. So we have five over Y plus three over Y equals eight over Y. Well, that gives you eight over Y, right? Five plus three over Y. As long as Y is not equal to zero, of course, so you could say that the negation here, you would say there exists a Y not equal to zero, such that five over Y plus three over Y equals eight over Y. Um, and then finally, number nine, this varies, but an example of a conjunction is when you have an and statement. So you could say something like, well, two is even and four is a multiple of two. That is true in both cases. Uh, an example of a disjunction, well, you could say uh, a disjunction has the word or. So you could say something like three is odd or 10 is prime. And that's it for the quiz. So let me know if any of this is familiar to you. If you're in high school, let me know. I'm curious uh, if any of this was attractive for you. Uh, and you want to have this rigorous approach and this proper approach to learning mathematics, you can email us at City Tutoring. Uh, my email address is in the uh, channel description. City Tutoring Maths with an S, yes, with an S, mathematics, City Tutoring Maths at gmail.com. Thank you all. And if this was useful, if you're interested in rigorous mathematics, this is the channel for you. And so I encourage you to subscribe and continue to support the mission here which uh, you're not getting this on any other channel.